What's going on with the guys? You see a Jaguar back here with GenJag.com and we got some breaking Jaguars news that came about right at the trade deadline. As the Jacksonville Jaguars have shipped defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. out to the Los Angeles Rams in exchange for a 2019 third round pick and a 2020 fifth round pick. Now when you look at this trade, first of all, before the season, I was talking a lot about Dante Fowler Jr. because really all the trade rumors were really started to come about before the season even started just because you looked at Dante Fowler Jr. He only had one career start for the Jacksonville Jaguars mainly due to the fact that Yannick Ngakwe was a third round pick in the 2016 draft and obviously he has been incredible for the Jaguars and Dante Fowler Jr. missed a whole, his whole entire rookie season due to a torn ACL and you know all that kind of stuff. Now, I looked at Dante Fowler and, you know, I was defending him in a lot of the trades. I did not want to trade Dante Fowler Jr. because I thought he brought tremendous value to the team. You know, we had a guy that came off the bench on third down situations, be able to come in there and get eight sacks on the season, be able to get, I think, about two sacks in the postseason. Uh, he helped out tremendously for our team to really get extra pass rush in to be that, that third down specialist. And, I think Dante Fowler Jr. is an incredible player and I think that he's going to do really, really well for the Los Angeles Rams. I think the scheme fits him a lot better in a 3-4 defense, kind of playing that outside linebacker role in space. Like, you know, when he was at the University of Florida, that's kind of what he played. He played more of a rover around the field and that's what he specialized in. You know, he didn't really come into the league with really defined pass rushing skills, but you know, he's great in the run game and he's still a developing pass rusher. He has gotten better in some of his pass rusher moves, although he is not, he is not really defined. But, you know, one of the biggest things that drove Jaguar fans nuts was just this guy off the field. This guy, you know, was kind of a loose cannon off the field, you know, like he got caught like refereeing a fight between like his, his like girlfriend and his baby mama or something like that. Uh, he got in an altercation with like a 50 year old man or something like that and wound up punching his glasses off, throwing his, you know, stuff into like a lake and, you know, he's gotten all kinds of just like traffic citations. Um, in the training camp, he got in a fight with Yannick Ngakwe on the field. A lot of people were just like tired of him and everything. And, you know, a lot of people cl classify this guy as a bad locker room guy and like a bad teammate. But I think that's just an ignorant statement, to be honest with you. I mean, you do look at all the things that he, things that he does on the field and you can say, okay, you draw conclusions, okay, maybe he's not a good teammate and this kind of stuff. But I just think it's an ignorant statement because, you know, here's the deal. I went to... Uh, the Chiefs game, you know, the Jaguars Chiefs game, and you know, I went there with the Sports Fury, and I was about three rows behind the Jaguars bench. Incredible seats, and obviously the offense was struggling mightily. We got blown out that game, and you know, when I was up close to the sideline, I was really wanting to take a look at what was going on on the sidelines, and you know, I wanted to see, you know, if any defensive players would come over to the offense and kind of, you know, hype them up or cheer them up or whatever, just kind of uh, come over and talk to them. You know, there were four guys that went over there and did it. They were the obvious. There was Telvin Smith, Kalanis Campbell, both captains of the defense. There was also Ronnie Harrison that kind of surprised me. You know, Ronnie Harrison was really over there encouraging the guys, talking them up, all that kind of stuff. So I did like to see that. But it was also Dante Fowler Jr. Dante Fowler Jr. was constantly over there high-fiving everybody. He was talking to Parnell after him having a bad game. And I, and you know, you, you draw these conclusions. You say, okay, you know, he went out there and got in fights at... Uh, you know, with Yannick and Gakwe, but at the same time, you know, that did happen. But you don't ever hear anybody in the locker room calling him out saying, Oh, Dante Fowler, do the you know, you hear that kind of stuff go on around the NFL of players calling people out. I never heard it with Dante Fowler Jr. And the thing about Dante is obviously he has kind of a criminal history in a way, like just with kind of all the all the different citations and like stupid stuff you hear about, like him with like fighting people. A lot of people think he's a bad person. I don't think he's a bad person. I just think he lacks, I just think he doesn't have good judgment. And I just think he's immature. You know, I think he's a lot like Jameis Winston. I don't think Jameis Winston is a bad guy, even though he's done all kinds of stupid stuff. I just think he doesn't have very good judgment on what he does. And uh, that's just how I feel about Dante Fowler Jr. I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's immature. I think he has like terrible judgment. But you know, to say he's a bad teammate, to say he's like a locker room cancer and all that kind of stuff, uh, I just think it's inaccurate and ignorant thing to say if you're not actually around the Jaguars like training room and uh, practice field and just in the locker room. Now I was in favor of trading Dante Fowler Jr. and I was in favor of maybe trading away for a fourth round pick 
And we actually got in exchange a third round pick and a you know fifth round pick in 2020. And you know third round pick, that's a premium spot. Now granted, the Rams are a very good team. They're the only undefeated team left. Uh, it looks like they're Super Bowl bound. I mean, I don't want to talk too soon yet, but uh, you look at the situation, it's going to be the end of the third round kind of pick. So, you know, that does kind of stink. Uh, but at the same time, man, you look at uh, you look at the third round pick, it's a good pick, man. You, you can hopefully get some kind of offensive talent. You know, that's kind of looking ahead a lot. You can maybe use that to trade up, like who knows. But you also look at the fifth round pick. Now, the fifth round pick in 2020, obviously it's far away. It doesn't sound like much, but... You know, look what fifth round picks have gotten us in the last couple of years. In 2017, we went out and signed Marcel Darius. He really changed the team. You know, this year we went out and signed Carlos Hyde. Obviously, Carlos Hyde has only been active one game, so uh, it's kind of, you can't really judge too much about him just yet. But, you know, you look at the running back situation, TJ Yellen and Corey Grant are going to be free agents this offseason. So you're going to have to sign a vet sometime, so might as well just... You know, just went ahead and trade for a power back and Carlos Hyde to go back there with Leonard Fournette. Now, I think trading away Dante Fowler Jr. will open some opportunities for some other players. Uh, you know, when Dante Fowler was out against the against the Giants when he was suspended week one, and that's one thing really quick before I get into it. Dante Fowler, even though he missed his whole entire rookie season with an ACL tear, he's never missed another game to the injury. So the guy has been very healthy for all your Rams fans out there kind of wondering about him. You know, he only missed one regular season game after that due to a suspension. But, you know, while I'm talking about, you know, Dante Fowler Jr., it's going to open up some opportunities for other people. Lorente McCray was kind of backing them up before, you know, when he was out for suspension against the Giants. So, you know, he's kind of more of that speed rush guy. It'll also open up opportunity for maybe DeWan Smoot to come in there off the strong side defensive end spot because he was a third round pick in 2017 and he hasn't been active one single game. And that's another reason why the Jaguars have been so bad this year. We've gotten no impact from any of our top three picks in 2017 between Leonard Fournette, Cam Robinson, and uh, and Dewan Smoot. And usually these rookies, these guys, these draft picks make a big jump from year one to year two. We've got no pro productivity from those guys. So hopefully Dewan Smoot can show some stuff. He's not the same kind of player as Dante Fowler Jr. He's more of a power guy. He's more of a tweener. You know, he just looks like like he's right in between a three technique and like a strong side defensive end. So. We'll see kind of what he has to offer. Obviously, there's still a lot left desired there. Uh, we got to see more out of him. Also, man, with Taven Bryan, I feel like Taven Bryan is a defensive tackle playing defensive end. I, I want to move this guy back to the interior. He looks lost out there in space when it comes to playing that uh, strong side defensive end. He hasn't really done much at all. He hasn't flashed at all so far, which is very concerning with a first-round pick. I mean, you don't want to judge rookies too soon, but, you know, the first half of the season has gone by and he's done nothing, you know, and that's concerning. So hopefully I want to move him back into that three technique defensive tackle spot, uh, put Dewan Smoot out there at a uh, strong side defense and just see what you have in that. And, you know, this kind of begs the question, if the Jaguars, you know, I tweeted this out earlier. I said, you know, if the Jaguars trade Dante Fowler Jr., it'll be interesting if they do just because if they do, does that mean that the Jaguars are kind of thinking that they're out of the playoff run just because, you know, if we're a 6-2 and two team, I don't think we should trade away Dante Fowler Jr., but right now we're a 3-5 and five team. We're showing very little signs of hope and life out there. And, you know, like right now we'd have to go 7-1 and one down the stretch to even match our record from last year. And, you know, this team, if they got into the playoffs, you know, it doesn't look like they'd be able to do anything. I mean, I don't want to talk too negatively about the Jaguars right now, but that kind of is what it is. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be complaining, oh, they should have went out and grabbed a quarterback or something like that. But really, you look around at it, you know, you see Tyrod Taylor, Jameis Winston, uh, the same old names kind of being thrown out there uh, to be like potential replacements like Nick Foles. And, you know, honestly, if none of the, if these guys, the only way you trade for quarterback is if they make you an instant Super Bowl contender. If we bring in the Tyrod Taylor, is that the missing piece to a Super Bowl? I don't think so. So keep your draft picks, draft a quarterback next year in the first round. Maybe move, you know, you can use that third round pick as ammunition to maybe move up in a draft. Like who knows? But uh, the no quarterback is kind of coming here and help. We're working with Blake Bortles and Cody Kessler. So that's kind of that now. I don't want to get too off topic. Obviously, this was about Dante Fowler Jr., but before the season, I don't want to trade Dante Fowler Jr. Very valuable player. I'm really interested to see how he does in a 3-4 scheme as like an outside linebacker. Uh, playing with a lot of good players around him. You know, I like him to be around veterans like an Aaron Darnold, 
um, or like an Aaron Donald, I said Donald, uh, Aaron Donald, like an Adama Kinsu. Um, you know, he was around a lot of veterans at the Jaguars locker room, defensive line group with Malik Jackson, Clayus Campbell. You know, I like him to be not necessarily the biggest figure out there. That's why he might not work out for like a Jets or something like that. But yeah, Dante Fowler Jr., man, we trade him around for a 20, uh, 2019 third round pick, uh, 2020 fifth round pick, and uh, it's been real, man. And now he is gone. So yeah, that's the end of my video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for future videos, and I'll see you guys next time.